Welcome to Computer Science 320, 2014, Winter 2, Midterm 2 Practice Problem Screencast, Problem 6.3. So now we're supposed to finish this radically inefficient divide and conquer pseudocode for MakeTree and MakeTree Helper. And notice that up above, we've already figured out how a particular problem breaks down into parts, and we've already figured out why we need these two parameters to represent subproblems. So this ought to help tremendously as we write this dynamic programming, oh, sorry, this divide and conquer approach to MakeTree and MakeTree Helper. Now MakeTree itself is written for us already. Um, you know, it should really return the result of MakeTree Helper. I'll just claim this is pseudocode, so I meant return. Okay, so MakeTree is going to take an array of nodes and it's just going to call MakeTree Helper and the only reason it's setting up to call MakeTree Helper is to make sure that we've got a low and a high parameter that we can pass along. So it passes the nodes unchanged and it says I'm interested in solving everything from one all the way up to the length of nodes. And then MakeTree Helper takes nodes low and high and it needs to have a base case. So what should the base case be? How long should the subsequence we're working on be for the base case? You may have gone with one node. Uh, it turns out to be much more convenient to have zero nodes as a base case here. So it really is often handy to have trivial base cases. So why is that? Well, let's say that you've got you know keys one, two, and three as input, and you want to try using three as the root. Well, that divides the problem into two nodes on the left, and how many nodes on the right? Zero nodes on the right, right. So you can check to make sure if there are zero nodes, don't make the recursive call to the right. But it's kind of nice just to keep your code nice and simple and always make the recursive call on both sides. And as long as you have a base case that can handle zero nodes, that is no problem. So I'm going to check to see if there are zero nodes. And the way that I'm going to do that is to check the length of this section. And as we've seen a few previous times, high minus low plus one is the length of this section of the array. And if that's equal to zero, well then what is the cost of the most efficient tree? If the most efficient tree has no nodes in it, and we want the sum of the product for each node of its depth and its access count. Well, what's the sum of zero items? It's just zero. So we're going to return zero in there. That takes care of the base case. Maybe we'll also need a base case for the length being one, maybe not, but we'll certainly want this base case, so we can worry about the rest of it later. Now, let's make sure we've got all the rest of the algorithm on screen. There we go. So we've got a recursive case here, and it starts off with a best solution so far, which we set to infinity. And then down here at the bottom is a typical update. If the total cost that we compute is less than the best so far, then we're going to update the best so far to total cost. So we're looking for a minimum here, and we're updating it as we go along. Okay. And then way down at the bottom, whatever the best so far is, by the time we're done looking through all of the options, that is the overall best, and that's what we'll return. So this is a totally typical code structure where we are minimizing in this case because we're updating when we find something less than the best we found so far and we're starting with positive infinity. And then we've got a loop for each index i such that low is less than or equal to i less than or equal to high. So looking at every single node in the range, so this uh, iterates over all nodes in the range that we're considering. Well, what do we do with those nodes? Let's jump back up and remind ourselves what the insight is that we're supposed to be chasing down here. And the insight was that some node has to be the root of the tree, and the choice of root divides the remaining problems into two separate pieces. So what we're doing here is we're looking through all of our possible choices. Some node has to be the root. It can actually be any of the nodes, but one of them has to be it. And so we're deciding which node will be the root. So i is going to be the root. And we'll try each possible choice of i. Well, if i is the root, what subproblems does that divide the problem into? Well, again, let's look back up. So up here we said, uh, let's say we choose the fifth node, so i equals 5, as the root uh, in this problem. Well, we chose this fifth node as the root, and it divided the problem into two subproblems, the sixth and seventh and the first, second, third, and fourth. 
Why did it divide it into those? Well, the left side of the left side is the same as the left side was before. But the right side of the left side is one less than the element we've put in the root. Over on the right side, the left side of the right side is one greater than the root. And the right side of the right side is where it was before. So this ought to be low over here, this ought to be high over here, and this is one less than the element we picked, which is i down below, so it's i minus 1, and this is i plus 1. So that ought to be all the information we need to know what are the recursive calls we need to make here. What are the subproblems that we need to solve? Well, we need to solve one subproblem that ranges from low to i minus 1. We need to solve one subproblem that ranges from i plus 1 to high. So those are indeed the left and the right hand costs. And then we need to compute the additional cost that's involved in building up this tree. So what happened is we've got a root. We've got some subtree on the left. We've got some subtree on the right. We know which nodes are in the subtree on the left. They're all of the nodes from low up to i minus 1. We know which nodes are in the subtree on the right. They are all the nodes from i plus 1 to high. Interestingly, we, we don't exactly know how they're ordered. We could reconstruct it. We could look back through what we did and figure out how did we arrange these nodes into a binary search tree. But however we did it, left cost and right cost aren't quite big enough. They're the cost of the subtrees as standalone trees. So like that tree as a tree on its own, this tree as a tree on its own. But when I make these subtrees of a new root, I increase the depth of every single node in each subtree by one. So here's some node in the left subtree. If it used to have a depth of d, it now has a depth of d plus 1, right? Because I make it one level deeper in the tree. Now let's say its access cost is a. Well, then it used to have a total cost of d times a, and now it has a total cost of d plus 1 times a. So the question is, what's the additional cost? Well, for that particular node, we can figure out the additional cost. We can just subtract the left side from the right side. So d plus 1 times a minus d times a. Well, that's da plus a minus da. That's just a. And that kind of makes sense. We took this node, regardless of where it was in the left subtree, maybe it was the root, maybe it was really deep in the left subtree, it doesn't matter. Wherever it was, it is now exactly one level deeper than it was before. So maybe it's really deep and we pay a lot for that node because it's so deep. That doesn't matter. We were already paying a lot before. The point is not how much we pay total. The point is how much more we pay. And we're only paying one level more. The charge for one level more is just the access cost, the access count, that is. So in the left subtree, for example, what is the additional cost? It's the sum of the access counts, the frequencies, of all the nodes in the left subtree. It matters not at all how those nodes are organized. Regardless, the additional cost will be the sum of all their costs. And the additional cost on the right-hand side will be the sum of all the frequencies of all the nodes in the right-hand side, again, regardless of how they are organized into a tree. So overall, we're adding up the sum of all of the frequencies of all of the nodes except for one. We're charged nothing for the root. So a handy way to do this is the sum of all frequencies of nodes low up to high minus nodes i dot freak. That's kind of handy because, you know, calculating this sum every time, the sum of all the frequencies of nodes low to high, um, that's not necessarily cheap. We don't necessarily want to calculate that every single time. Uh, but we clearly don't. In this loop, we'll use this over and over again, and we'll just subtract different things out each time. So we could just compute the sum nodes low up to high once, spending linear time doing that, and then we can individually subtract out the frequency each time.
It turns out there's actually an even cheaper way we could do this. We could spend uh, less than linear time per call computing this summation if we sort of take some notes initially. Uh, I'll let you think about how to do that, but it's not going to turn out to matter because we're already running through all the indices from low up to high, so we're already spending linear time in the length of this subarray just looking at all the choices, so who cares if we spend linear time adding up the values of all the nodes from low to high. The key thing is if we do it every single time in here, if we do this summation every single time through this loop, we'll actually spend quadratic time at each subproblem because we'll look through all the indices and we'll do a sum over all the indices for each index that we look through. Uh, so that'll be asymptotically inefficient. Okay, but in terms of expressing the right idea, this has got the right idea right here. The left cost is the best solution to the, for the left subtree. The right cost is the best solution for the right subtree. And then we have an additional cost, which is the sum of all the frequencies of all the nodes in this portion of the array, not counting the frequency of the root in particular. The total cost then is just left cost plus right cost plus additional cost. And we see if that's the best so far. And if it is, we update our cost. And that should do it. This is now a solution to the problem.